Let's talk now about identifying and researching potential vulnerabilities. So we have our notes here and all I've done is move them off of Notepad and into Cherry Tree because Cherry Tree is a bit more visual and bigger font for us on video. And I made two nodes. I made the main node here of notes and then I made a child node here of vulnerabilities. So if we recall from our notes, we have 80 and 443 and we've identified some findings that we're going to write up on a pen test report. And those findings are, you know, a default web page, 404 page was giving a little bit of information disclosure, and the server headers were disclosing some information as well. On top of that, we've identified some information that we need for research. Now we've got 80 here, and on port 80 we've got this Apache, this Mott SSL, and this Open SSL that we could research. And when we ran our NICTO scan, we identified something potentially juicy here where mod SSL 2.8.4 falls in line with this, which is 2.8 and 7 or lower, which we are, are vulnerable to a remote buffer overflow, which may allow a remote shell. Remote buffer overflow, meaning that we are don't have to be local, we can be remote, which we are, and we can gain access via remote shell, meaning we can gain access to that machine. So that's good. That's really good. Uh, the other one here we see is SMB, and we identified Samba version 2.2.1a. We also identified a Webalizer version 2.01, and we've identified OpenSSH 2.9p2. So for this video, we're going to target the low-hanging fruit, and I put this in order of how I would attack it. Now, again, I always think 80, 443, and 139, 445 are the juiciest to me. This Webalizer might be juicy. Open SSH, probably not that juicy. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and research 80 and 443, and then we'll research the SMB as well, and then I'll leave you to do a little digging on these just as practice, and we can see where we go. So from here, we're just gonna go out and open up Firefox, and we'll go out to Google, and on Google, we can pick and choose which one we want to research here. Now, this mod SSL 2.8.4 is probably the juiciest of the items. And we might want to start there. So let's just say something like mod SSL 2.8.4. You see the 2.8.7 exploit showing up, by the way. We'll just do 2.8.4 exploit. And we'll see what comes up. Now... Naughty words, naughty words. We'll just call it open luck, okay? And you can see, don't cheat, Keoptrix is coming up as well. But we're gonna go ahead and just open this, uh, open this Apache mod, and then we're gonna also open this GitHub one. And I'll cheat a little bit and tell you why here in a minute. So, Apache mod SSL 2.8.7, less than 2.8.7. Scroll through here. And it just has the code for us. Now, this is where you have a chance to come through and read the code. Now, it looks like to me that they're just identifying, if you've never seen a buffer overflow, which you probably haven't, there will be one later in the course, it's identifying where it's going to have the architecture, right? So the architecture has a, its own identifier. So depending on, which it looks like this works for quite a bit of different architectures of Linux, depending on which Linux you're running, is this uh, return address here. So that's all this is doing. And then there's going to be code down here, I'm guessing, for an overflow, which you see a bunch of A's. As you're going to see later in the course, this is just this overflow. So you'll learn to read this over time. Again, like you do not have to code this. You do not have to be, uh, you know, you don't have to be super good developer, but just understanding kind of what's going on and making sure that you know, the code that you download is safe on your computer and it's good to go. Now, this is coming off exploit database, so you can, um, I wouldn't say assume, but you can trust it for the most part that this is safe code. You have the option here to download the exploit and you actually have the option to download the vulnerable app as well if you ever want to build out a machine and play on your own. Um, so we have a little bit of information here that it just says, hey, you know, this is, less than 2.8.7, open SSL, and we've got a remote buffer overflow. There's nothing else here, uh, but that's okay. That's, you know, this might be good for us. This is something that we need to note. 
Um, so we can copy this and I would put it here and we could just say something like 8443 potentially vulnerable to, we'll call it open luck and then we'll just put it here. And we'll also, we should also um, save this open luck and I'll cheat a little bit and tell you guys why is because this open, uh, the, the exploit database one without uh, saying bad words is not going to allow us to work. It's not gonna work. Um, the, the exploit's a little dated and that's why there is a GitHub one out there that actually does work. So we're gonna utilize the GitHub one instead uh, when we do get to the exploitation section. So a little bit of a hint, a little bit of a foreshadowing, we are gonna utilize this exploit. So we could also go in and research we could say Apache HTTPD 1.3.20, copy that, and come to Google and just say, hey, I wonder if there's an exploit for that. And you would just search something like this. And you can see in here, Apache 1.3.20 is actually showing up in this vulnerability as well. So that's good. And then sometimes we see these websites like this CVE details. These are okay to look at. Uh, they're they're all right. Like you come in here and what you want to look for is the score. Immediately my eyes shift to the score. I don't care about anything else. If I see something that's red, I get excited. Um, but we see no red here. So I, I don't think that necessarily this is vulnerable to like a remote code execution. It's got a lot of denial of service, but I would want to see like a high score, which means a critical. That's what red is. Red is critical. So we've got um, high moderate and low here, but we don't have a critical one. So this doesn't look like it really probably has anything, but it is tied to this, which is another wheel spinning indicator here that, hey, you know what? We probably got an exploit here with this thing, or at least something that we should try. And that open SSL is tied directly to this mod SSL, so we don't really have to research it. Now let's move on to Samba here, Samba 2.2.1a. Let's copy this and let's check for an exploit. So just as simple as is doing this and saying exploit. And we've got a few here. We've got this Samba 2.2.8 remote code execution. We've got Samba 2.2.x remote buffer overflow. And we've got one down here, which I love to see. This is Rapid7. So let's go to Rapid7 first. Why do I like to see Rapid7? Well, Rapid7 makes Metasploit. So it looks like this exploit is called Samba Trans 2 Open. And let's read a little bit about the description. So it says, this exploits the buffer overflow found in Samba versions 2.2.0 to 2.2.8. That meets our criteria. This particular module is capable of exploiting the flaw in x86 Linux systems, that's important to know, that do not have the no exec stack option set. Note, some older versions of Red Hat do not seem to be vulnerable since they apparently do not allow anonymous access to IPC. So remember, we did get anonymous access to IPC earlier when we connected to it via, via our SMB client. We never got access to admin. We could never do anything in IPC. We tried to say LS and it said denied, but we still logged in. So we do have anonymous access to IPC. That's interesting and we are potentially running against an x86 Linux system, so that's interesting as well. It looks like we're potentially meeting some of the requirements here. Now, here is where this is great. You scroll down here and you see module options, and look, this is Metasploit. It gives you the module options. It says, hey, use exploit Linux Samba Trans to open, and then it tells you, hey, how to do this, and then you're good to go. That's really nice, I really like that. So I'm gonna copy this one. And we'll just come to our notes and we'll say something like 139, potentially vulnerable to trans to open. And we'll just paste the link here. And we can come read these as well. So this is the trans to open overflow here. This looks like the manual version of the trans to open overflow. It looks like it is a Perl script. And again, it looks like an overflow. Um, so you'll learn to read these and see what they look like just over time. But you know, you just wanna look at the code, make sure everything's good to go. You will need to run this with Perl. It gives you the options here, trans to root Perl, what option to select, what target type to select, your IP address and your target IP address. So we'll save this one as well, why not? 
And we'll take a look at the other one, just see what it is. And it looks like it could work for us, remote root exploit for Samba 2.2.x that works against all Linux distributions. Samba.c. I think this is a possibility as well. So this is C code here. We're going to go ahead and just copy this. And we'll go ahead and add this to our list as well. And we'll figure it out. So all we're doing right now is the research. Okay, so from here, I've showed you the Google way. Let's say for some reason you want to do this on the fly, you want to use another tool, or you're, you know, you're in a network and the network has no access, you have no internet access out, you have no research capabilities. Uh, you can go to the terminal and there's a great way to research this as well. So let's go back up to our notes and take a peek. Now let's take this Unix Samba 2.2.1a, for example. And let's do a tool called Searchploit. Now Searchploit is going to search for the exploit database, this whole database here that we're looking through. It's brought down onto your machine. Every time you update your machine and the, the database updates, it updates down your machine and all those exploits get downloaded for you already. But you could say Searchploit and maybe we search something like Samba 2.2.1a. Let's see what happens. No results. Well, okay. Um, why is that? Well, let's delete this. Now, you cannot be too specific with Searchploit. The more specific you are, the worse off you are because Searchploit is searching the exact string that you are using. Now, you see that we search Samba and it's searching for Samba in a two. Okay, now we can start to see some things here. We see a Linux remote code execution right here. And we're going to have to look through these. Now, it's not pretty, right? It's not the prettiest. But you see the trans to open does show up. Now, it's not the easiest way. I do prefer Google. But if you're in a pinch or you want to look at all the different possibilities and see maybe, hey, is there a 2.2 in here? So like, look, Samba 2.2.0 to 2.2.8 OSX. So that's not our operating system, but it's called trans to open. And we see that over and over and over again. So maybe the wheels spin again and it says, hey, trans to open. I think that that's potentially what we're looking for here. And then once we get down to the threes, we know, hey, we've gone too far. This is not our version, etc. We could do the same thing with, let's say, the mod SSL. And we can say something like mod SSL2 if I type search exploit in front of it and do some searching there. And we can see, okay, there's denial of service, not it, 2.8.x, potentially, right? And then mod SSL 2.8.7. And another thing to look at over here, denial of service, denial of service, remote. Remote is huge. Remote means remote code execution. So learning to read these as well, exploit, check, Unix, okay, we're running on Linux, check, remote code execution, check, and... Apache mod SSL less than 2.8.7, check. So there's three different versions of this, and this is kind of why when I said earlier that, you know, they don't really work. Um, one's been broken, they've rebuilt it. I just like the one off GitHub. So we'll, we'll play around with that one in just a little bit. But this is what you're doing. You're either going out to Google with the information that you find, or you're going to search for it. You're just doing research. So now we've identified a couple of potential vulnerabilities, and we can go from there. So what I encourage you to do is just do some research on this webalizer, do some research on OpenSSH, see what you can find out just for research sake, practice with Searchploit, practice with Google, and then meet me in the next video. So what I want to do before we get into exploitation, I want to give you a quick sneak peek at what your notes should look like so far so you can see what good note keeping is. And this is in terms of an assessment, okay? Just in terms of an assessment. And then from there, we're going to practice with some other scanning tools just to get you familiar with other things than using just Nmap. And then finally, we'll move into our exploitation. So I will see you in the next video when we look quickly at our notes.